In the U.S., household circuits use 120 volts 60 hertz alternating current, or AC. Unlike a battery, with fixed positive and negative terminals, which provide the direct current or DC, for alternating current, these two prongs at an outlet change its polarity all the time. At one moment, this terminal has a higher potential than the other, the next moment it has a lower potential. The 60 hertz means the polarity changes at the frequency of 60 times every second. If I plot the voltage versus time graph, for our household circuit, it will look like a sine function. The 120 volts would be the average, the root mean square voltage. We use AC instead of DC for household electricity. Perhaps one of the biggest advantages of alternating current is that it is easier to use transformers to change AC voltages for transmission. If you remember, in the 8th circuit's lesson, we talked about power companies using high voltages to transmit electricity in order to reduce power loss to the miles and miles long of transmission wires. With AC, it is easier for a power company to step up the voltages for transmission and then step the voltages down near the destination. We will learn about transformers when we get to the electromagnetic induction unit. In order for all appliances plugged into outlets to receive the same 120 volts, they have to be connected in parallel, so each appliance gets the same 120 volts. By the way, we draw a circle around the sine wave kind of thing for an AC voltage source, instead of this for DC. If appliances are connected in series, they would have to share the 120 volts which means that the more appliances we turn on, the less voltage each appliance would get. Therefore, they won't be able to operate normally. Another advantage for parallel circuit is that when they are connected in parallel and one light bulb breaks, the other appliances can still operate unaffectedly because the current can still flow in this loop and in this loop. If they are in series, like one broken light bulb can keep the current from flowing in the entire circuit, kind of like Christmas lights. Because the small bulbs in Christmas lights cannot handle 120 volts, so they are connected in series to share the voltage. That's why if one bulb breaks, a string of bulbs would stop working. Although these days, some of those lights may contain shunt wires to alleviate this problem. Now let's look at a few electric hazards. Because the appliances are connected in parallel, the more appliances we turn on, the less the equivalent resistance. V equals to IR. For the same 120 volts, the lower the resistance, the more the current in the total circuit. So this wire here gets a lot of current. Because the wires have resistance too, the more the current through these wires, P equals to I squared R, the hotter the wires get. Wires are rated by the maximum current they can handle safely. For example, this 14 gauge wire is rated for 15 amps of current. The thicker 12 gauge wire is rated for 20 amps. If we use wires rated for 15 amps, turning on too many appliances in the same circuit can make the current exceed 15 amps and overload the wires, which can be a fire hazard. Therefore, we have to limit the amount of current in the circuit to 15 amps. In the old days, we would use a 15 amp fuse over here to prevent overload. A fuse is made of an alloy with low melting temperature. When the current exceeds the fuse's current rating, the fuse melts and break the connection, and no current can flow in this entire circuit. When the fuse melts, we would have to turn off some appliances and replace the fuse. These days, we use circuit breakers instead of fuses, so we only have to flick the switch after it is tripped. This diagram shows a simplified circuit breaker that uses a bimetallic strip. When a current flows through the strip, it heats up and curls to the left. For a 15 amp breaker, when the current reaches 15 amps, the bimetallic strip curls to here, and this conducting bar drops, 
the circuit loses contact and all appliances in this circuit lose power. Then we have to wait for the strip to cool and flick the switch to turn the circuit back on. Electric fire not only can be caused by the overloading of wires, it can also be caused by arcing. Arcing can happen to a bad connection in a circuit. For example, if a light bulb is not screwed in tightly, the loose connection can result in arcing. When there's a small gap between two different voltages, we get a strong electric field. Just to analyze it qualitatively, we can use V equals to ED. For the same 120 volt voltage difference, the smaller the D, the stronger the electric field. When the electric field reaches 3 million volts per meter, dry air gets ionized. Since air molecules can move around, ionized air means ions, charges, get to move around, which means air becomes a conductor. So air conducts electricity through this gap and arcing happens. By the way, the reason why strong electric field can ionize air or break down an insulator is because an electric field can polarize a molecule. Let's say this is an air molecule inside the electric field. The electron cloud would experience the electric force that way, so the electron cloud would shift that way, leaving positive charges on that side. So now we have a polarized air molecule. And this positive charge would experience the electric force F equals to QE to the right. The negative charge would experience the force F equals to QE to the left. And the stronger the electric field, the stronger the pulling force. So when the electric field gets strong enough, this molecule gets pulled apart. For dry air, when the electric field reaches 3 million volts per meter, air molecules get ripped apart, which means the air becomes ionized. Now let's get back to electric fire hazards, which can also be caused by a short circuit. For example, when a mouse chews off the insulation around your wires, or when the insulation around the wires breaks down. The two wires can make contact, making the resistance here almost zero. We call it a short circuit, because now current can just make the loop through the short. No current would travel down to the load appliance. A short circuit causes the resistance in the loop to drop really low. P equals to V squared over R. For the same 120 volts, the very low resistance means very high power consumption. The wires can get really hot and may start a fire. Even though a short circuit causes a high current flow, which can trip a circuit breaker, fire may still get started before the breaker trips. And even if wires do not make direct contact over here, without insulation, arcing can happen and may cause fire. Another kind of electric hazard happens when electricity passes through our body. The human body is a conductor, so if there is a voltage difference and a conducting path, electric current can pass through a person and injure or electrocute the person. It can be especially serious if a portion of the current passes through the heart or the brain. A current exceeding 10 milliamps can produce a sustained muscle contraction, causing the person receiving the shock to be unable to let go of the electrified object. In that case, if the current cannot be turned off, a rescuer should be sure to stand on something dry and non-conductive and use a non-conducting object to push the electrified object away. However, if this involves a downed high voltage power line, one should stay at least 20 feet away. For electric shock to happen, there has to be a closed path for current to flow through a person. For example, this microwave oven has a faulty connection between its metal case and a hot or live wire. When a person touches the metal case, there can be a current that flows through the person to the ground. If the person's hands and feet are dry, the resistance is high, the current will be low, so the shock may not be lethal. If the person wears insulating shoes, so there is no path for current to flow, he or she may escape serious shock. This is the reason why birds can stand on high voltage wires without getting hurt, because there is no path for current to flow through the birds to the ground. On the other hand, if things are wet, 
the current can be dangerously high, so one should avoid touching electric appliances when one is wet or is touching things like a faucet that is directly connected to the ground. And to avoid such shock, we can properly ground the metal case through the grounding round prong of the plug. So the current will mostly flow through the path with the least resistance to the ground, instead of going through the person to the ground. Whenever there is a current leaking to the ground via an unintended path, the outgoing current and the returning current will be unequal. A ground fault circuit interrupter, GFCI breaker or outlet can detect current leakage of 5 mA or more and shut down the electricity to limit damage caused by such leakage. These days, it is usually required by code for people to install GFCI outlets for electrical appliances that may come into contact with water, such as those in bathrooms, kitchens, and laundry rooms. This is a GFCI outlet. It has these test reset buttons that we are supposed to test and reset once a month.